Top of the morning, family. What's going on? It's your boy, Pastor Marlon Austin, Senior Pastor of the Anointed House of Prayer Ministries. I am super excited to bring to you another wonderful word of encouragement this morning. Um, I don't know if you all have been noticing, but we have been dealing with Psalm 23. So if you have your Bibles, do me a major favor and get your Bibles really quick. <clears throat> And get to Psalm 23 because Psalm 23 is a one of my favorite. Well, it's actually my favorite psalm, and I want to uh, continue to just pick on this thing because I believe that there's so much meat in this psalm because we are sheep needing to, needed to be led by God. So let's make sure we uh, get your Bible in Psalm 23, and I'm gonna read uh, the first three verses, and it reads like this: The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And the part I want to focus on today is right here. He restores my soul. He leads me to the path of righteousness. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me beside the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Family, have you ever been in a car with somebody who did not know where they were going? I don't know about you all, but I know me. I'm going to be honest and transparent with you all. But there are some times, and uh, my wife and I will be going somewhere, and uh, we'll be traveling, and she'll say, hey, baby, this is the way you need to go. And I'll say, no, baby, this is the way I want to go. And sometimes she won't be paying attention, and I won't be paying attention. And long story short, I'll find myself not knowing exactly where to go. But instead of me saying, hey, listen, I don't know where I am. I am lost. What I would do is I would keep on driving as if I knew where I was going. In all actuality, I did not know which direction direction I was going and she figured out one day that I did not know where I was going when I rolled past this same gas station three times I couldn't figure out another way to let her know why I keep going by the same gas station but what I understand from this is letting us know that direction is very important so just as well as direction is important when you're traveling in the car because what you're doing is you're putting your life in somebody else's hand you're putting your livelihood in somebody else's hand which means that the person that's driving that car should be responsible and should be uh, a plot that the person should be responsible and that person should be able to fit the criteria and meet the standard to be trustworthy enough to be able to tra travel with you. What am I saying? I'm saying that the God is letting us know that he is our shepherd. And even though sometimes we may lose our direction, he lets us know that he will lead us in the path. Why do he have to lead us in the path? Why? Because there's a way that seems right unto the man, but in the end it is destruction. So there's sometimes we can think we're doing the right thing, but in all actuality, we could be actually going the wrong way because the good shepherd lets us know he will lead us down the right path and we cannot allow we can't be great at uh, great at leading people if we never become great at following people. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, he said unto them, he says, I am the way, I am the truth and the life, which means that why do we need to see the way if we are following the way? So we're continuing to follow Jesus. We don't have to see exactly every single thing that he do, but if we trust him, if we seek him, if we hold on to his unchanging hand, he'll lead us beside the still waters. He'll make sure he'll meet all of our needs. He'll make sure he continue to provide for us. Why? Because because there's so many ways that we think we want to go. But at the end of the day, the Bible lets us know in Matthew 7 and 13, it says, enter by the narrow gate for the wide gate is broad and the way leads to destruction. And there are many who go into it by it. But narrow is the gate. Narrow is the gate. Difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who who find it, which lets us know that it's a small path that we got to find. And the only way we can find that path is when we do Proverbs 3 and 6 says, and it says, lean not to my own understanding, but in all my ways, acknowledge him, knowing that he will direct my, come on, y'all want to help me preach this thing? Let's do this thing. So now he's saying, listen, I need you to know that I'll direct your path, but I need you to know that I'll do it for my righteousness, which means that I'll let your, my, I'll let your wrong and connect with my right. And I'll make whatever wrong with you. I'll make it right with the blood. That's the blood right there. He says, listen, I'll I'll let you know that your in your in your must in God's sight, our living and our righteousness is filthy rags. But with Jesus' blood, it becomes holy and it becomes pure. So what is he saying? Is this? He's saying, listen, I will let you know that I'll lead you. I'll lead you beside the still waters. I'll restore your soul and I'll lead you in the path of righteousness. And I won't do it for you. I'll do it for my name's sake. That's what I'm gonna take my exit right there. See, there are some things that God will do for you and I. And it's not because we are all that in a bag of chips. It's not because we got it all together. And it's not because of any of those things. 
It's really because our his name is on us. Think about when you buy yourself a product. When you buy yourself a product, the product normally comes with something called a, a warranty. And the reason that the warranty is there, it ensures the product. See, like I got these headphones. These are Apple headphones. There is a warranty on these headphones. So if I just so happen to break this cord, Apple says they will replace this cord free of charge on my end, but it's going to cost them. Why? They don't mind paying the price because it's all about that name. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm just trying to let us all know today is this, that God says because his name is on you, he not going to let you fail. Because his name was on you, he not going to let you drown. Because his name is on you, he not going to let you be consumed. Because his name is on you, he not going to let the enemy consume you. Because his name is on you. I dare you thank God right now for having his name on you. I'm done, y'all. I, I, we ain't going to the same church. We, we ain't going to have a whole service this morning. But I just want somebody to just thank God that his name is on you. Come on. I dare you say, Lord, I thank God. I thank you, Lord, that your name is on me. Listen, there's some things that he didn't do because his name is on you. And he don't want him. Listen, we don't want to keep. We don't want to make him look bad because at the end of the day, there are people watching us. So I want to I want to pray this morning. I want to pray that we, we really take time to, to follow God and understand it. Listen, his name is on us. So make sure where every way you go, you, you realize who you're representing because his name is on you. So when you know his name is on you, you handle yourself differently. When his name is on you, you ain't going around here cussing at everybody, fussing and howling and screaming and acting a prayer fool because his name is on you. So I, I'm going to pray for you this morning. I want to pray that we follow him and represent him well. Because there's some things that we, we have to get from the shepherd. And the first thing we always need to get from a shepherd is protection. Why? Why do sheep need to be protected? There's something out there called a, a wolf who comes to consume the sheep. The Bible says in Matthew, he says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he goes so far that he talks about the good shepherd. He says the good shepherd lays his life down for a sheep. Then he also defends his sheep. So what, what God lets us know that he is our protector. So no matter what's going on around, you know that if he's your shepherd, he's going to protect you. Not only does he guarantee us that as a shepherd, he also guarantees us his uh, uh, providence and his provision. So God is letting us know that as long as you walk with me, I got you. So he's saying, listen, I'll protect you and I also provide for you. So listen, when you need something, I'm going to take care of you. That's why he said in first verse, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. David knew exactly what, it, what the relationship between a, a shepherd and a sheep was because he was a shepherd. He led sheep. So he understood how important his job was to make sure the sheep was taken care of and how he made sure that the sheep wouldn't be getting scattered. So I want to I wanna pray for us this morning because we are sheep. And, and honestly, some of us has gone astray. So I want to pray that even the ones that have gone astray, I pray that you come on back into the fold because there's room at the cross for you. So, Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, we come to you as humbly as we know how this morning just to say thank you. God, we thank you for last night's sleep. And God, we thank you for this early morning rising. We ask you right now, Lord, that you continue to open up our eyes and open up our minds as well as open up our hearts that we may hear from you. God, in this season of uncertainty, in this season of adversity, Lord, sometimes it seems like the the, the, the thoughts are getting cloudy. It seems like the voices are coming from every side. The fact that we can't do what we used to do, God, it seems like sometimes the walls are closing in on us, Lord, but we are asking you right now, Father. We're asking you that you send your angels, Lord, send a heavenly host of them, God, to continue to allow us to keep our minds stayed on you. For you have declared in your word that those who keep their minds stayed on you, you said that you will keep us in perfect peace. Lord, you also told us that we should bring every thought into captivity that raises itself up above the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So for that, we do that. We come to bring every thought of negativity, every thought of fear, every thought of worry, every thought of anxiety, every thought of, of stress, every thought of anything that's not like you. We ask you right now, God, that you bring those thoughts into captivity, Lord, and allow us to exchange those negative thoughts with some positive ones. Allow us to think on, on how much you, how, how, think on joy, think on peace, think on patience, think on power, Lord. Help us to be able to think on the goodness of Jesus in the land of the living, God. Help us to know that no matter what's going on, Lord, we still got a reason to say thank you. So the fact that you woke up this up this morning and started us on our way is enough to say thank you. 
the fact that you allow us to have running water, the fact that you allow us to have food on the table, a, a roof over our head, God, the air to breathe, God, the, the blood running warm in our veins, God, the fact that the oxygen is running through our body, God, the fact that you allow us to be able to seek you right now is enough just to say thank you, God. So we worship you this morning. And we magnify your name, God. We are asking you, God, that you continue to uh, move in our life, move in our mind, and move in our finances, God. Help us to know that this is not the end. Help us to be not weary and well doing, God, knowing that in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So, God, I'm asking you, God, that you bless each and every person that's watching this prayer right now, God. Strengthen them, God. Strengthen their family, God. Strengthen their finances, God, because we need you right now like never before. Oh, Father God, we need you in the home, God. We need you to bless the homes, God. Continue to provide for them, God. Continue to keep food in the refrigerator, God. Continue to allow them to love one another. Continue to lift one another and continue to pour into one another, God. I'm praying for families, God. I'm praying for marriages, God. I'm praying for children, God. I'm praying for relationships, God. I'm praying for, for the Baltimore city, God. I'm praying for Merlin, God. I'm praying for the U.S., God. I'm praying for the nation, God. I'm praying for the leaders, God. I'm praying for the governors, God. I'm praying for the Senate, God. I'm praying for the for the president, God. I'm praying right now, God, for them. I'm praying that you help us, God, because in this season, God, as leaders, God, we need to help us to make decisions, God, that will be for the decisions for the people, God, to empower the people, God, to help the people, God, because we know that this is something that you can use to get your glory, God. We don't understand, God, and all honesty, God, we don't fully agree, God, but we, we trust you, God. Help us to seek you even in this, God. Help us to continue to give you glory. Help us continue to praise your name, God, because we know that no matter what, you're still in control. Help us to know that you said in Romans 8 and chapter 28 that all things are working together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose, God. So we bless your name and we magnify your name, God. So we come to let the devil know that no weapon formed against your people shall prosper. We still gonna keep on having church. We still gonna keep giving God praise. We still gonna keep giving God glory. We still gonna keep on pressing in. We not going to allow nothing to stop us from doing what you called us to do. God, so we thank you right now. I pray for every pastor, God. I pray for every leader, God. I pray that you help them, God, even in this season, God. Not allow depression to set in, God. Give them courage, God. Give them joy, God. Put some people around them, God. That's going to help them to push, God. That's going to help them to hold on. That's going to help them to not give up the assignment, God. I pray for those pastors, God, who use them, who take care of their family, God. I pray that you provide for them, God. Not allow them to miss a beat, God. Keep food on the table, God. Keep the lights on, God. Keep it, keep it, keep it working, God. Keep it happening, God. Keep them in peace, God. Not allow them to get consumed, God. I pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God, for every healthcare worker right now, God, every person that's an essential employee, God, that has to go out here and, and risk their own lives, God, just to help somebody else, God. Help them, God. Give them protection, God. Give them provision, God, as well as give them wisdom, God. I pray for the families of those who have lost their lives right now, God. Help them to hold it together, God. They can't even have a, a good proper burial, God. So help them to be able to put the broken pieces back together, God, in the midst of all the chaos, God, in the midst of all the confusion, God. Oh, God, hold them close, God, for you said in your word that you are near to the broken heart, and you said in your word that blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted, God. So comfort your people, God. Oh, God, your people are hurting, God. Your people are weary, God. Oh, God, you said in your word that in the weaknesses, your strength is made perfect, God. So allow your strength to be made perfect right now, God. Pick up every bowed down head right now, God. Mend every broken heart right now, God. Hand every body right now, God. Move mountains right now, God. God, because we need you, Lord. We need you to do something great in the earth. And God, I pray that you help us to give you the faith to do just that. So Lord, may you bless us and may you keep us. May you make your face to shine upon us. May you lift high upon your countenance unto us and be gracious unto us. May you grant us peace, power, protection, and provision, both now and forever. May our enemies come one way, but scatter seven different ways, but never come to our dwelling. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, family, and remember, no matter where you are today, when you feel like you're running out of juice, find yourself an outlet and plug into the power of prayer. You don't need Wi-Fi, you don't need no hot spot. All you need to do is find you a spot and get your prayer hot. I love your family. God bless you. Pray for me as I continue to pray for you. Peace and blessings.